really didn't think I'd have much to say today. But, turns out I do. I have been busy. Tuesday's my busy day. But I found out. Hi, Cole. I found out through a couple of my devoted followers. Because I have totally unsubscribed from all the bottom feeders. And I gave them that name. And they know who they are. And there's about 16 or 20. Maybe a thousand that watch. But all they do is cut each other down. Day after day, week after week. And I've been unsubscribed for a while. But two of my devoted followers sent me some information. It seems that Lauren is raising up out of the bottom feeder swamp that spawned her in the first place. She's back. She's back to the bottom feeders, trying to rally what trash there is to her aid because thanks to us, she's been exposed for what she is and who she is. And she's right where she belongs, in the bottom feeders, because every one of them, at least 98%, have called a cop more than once, posted pictures of family and children more than once, called jobs, emailed jobs more than once. Every one of these creators, every single one of them, has done or still is doing the very despicable, unforgiving shit that Lauren is known for. She came from this community and she's back in this community because I was sent screenshots and all the people in her chats that didn't know where she was until she got exposed because she disappeared, but she came from the bowels of this messy bunch of fucking females. They're all that way. They all sit up there and try to justify why they did it. Either somebody asked them to. Nobody can ask me a fucking thing. They can ask, but I will not call a cop. I will not call a job. I will not call CPS. The only thing I might do something about, and I would have to have 100% proof, is animal abuse. That's the only thing I might get involved in. And believe me, it wouldn't be somebody saying, hey, Terry, could you do this for me? I don't do that shit. I have to see it with my own eyes and know it's proof. So Lauren is making a comeback of sorts in the bottom feeder pit. And these women were so pathetic. I didn't see, I couldn't watch it. But I saw these pathetic females. They don't even know who Mob Tube is. They have no idea. They don't know who Darky is. They don't know who anybody is. But they're all trying to get involved. So... Be on the lookout in your chats for the bottom feeders. Not that I think they could do anything to you guys because you're a lot sharper than the women are. Let's just face it. Females are gossipy and believe everything you tell them. So anyway, I was glad that my two devoted followers let me know about this information. I had no idea she would make a comeback. And some of her wrenches in there were people that have disappeared too so they've all been together doing their things against you guys their stupid little cop calling snitching ways that they always have and I'm going to have to let Hyena do a blessing today because the last times I was on here she didn't get to do a blessing and I don't believe in prayers and that stuff myself but I do think this Pekingese might have something special going on for her and a lot of the ladies like to see Hyena do a blessing, and I've been leaving her out of it. I've been distracted because I've been selling puppies. I know, I see you. Hyena, come here, baby. You ready? Come here, over here on this side. Get over here. Okay. This is the one and only hyena and i've seen some of these ridiculous bottom feeders pick a dog up just because you pick a dog up it's not hyena by any stretch she's a psychic she told me three years ago the bottom feeders were never going to change she was absolutely right they're even more pathetic now because in the beginning there was only three of them that had channels and now they all have channels so they can go on all day long and just bash each other it's kind of funny it's kind of ironic 
And now here's Lauren back where she started. Right back where she started. And I think it's wonderful. Because half of the people that were in her chat couldn't stand her because she'd done some shit to them. I think I'm the only one that was never scared of her. Okay, you want to do a blessing? Hyena, is it too hot? Hey, amen. No, I don't want kisses. Amen. Hyena, no blessings today? Don't look like she's going to do one, people. Hyena, amen. Come on, do it. Come on, amen. Amen. Come on. Hyena. Come. Put your foot up. Give me your foot. Not your head. Your foot. I don't think she wants to do it, people. It's too hot. No blessings today. Just advice. Watch out for the bottom feeders. And I'm going to tell you a little... I'm not much of a mob. I mean, I love the mob and I love everything about them, but the closest I ever came to being with close to a real mob guy, I think was a real mob guy. I worked for a cheese plant in New York called Palio Dairy. I don't know if any of you people remember it because it was a long time ago and I'm older than all of you by about 20 years, so it had a parrot on it and it was spelled Polly. P-O-L-L-Y dash O, polio. And the guy that owned it was called Joe Polio. And the people that I worked for were Tony Russo, his two sons, Joe and John, and his daughter, Terry, worked in the payroll section. And they made the best mozzarella and ricotta cheese you've ever ate in your life. In fact, the ricotta place had these steel curtains you couldn't even go in there it was all they were afraid that craft would catch them making their cheese or something but anyway about twice a year joe polio the owner would come through there and he always wore a al capone looking hat and a big cigar and that was about the time jimmy hoffa disappeared so we always thought hoffa was buried somewhere in old salt but in the brine pits that's what we used to joke about, that they were coming down to make sure he was still buried where he belonged. And, to, and we had to work seven days a week because cows give milk seven days a week. So a lot of us would wind up working Christmas or Easter or something, and Tony would always come out there with us and buy us pizzas and sit with us because he felt guilty making people work on the holidays. I was in the Teamsters Union. I still am. And they had a big Teamsters Christmas party. Or no wives or husbands were allowed. It was just the members. And then Polio had a Christmas party for the whole family. Well, I have pictures somewhere of the going away party they gave me because my husband, my daughter's father, got transferred. They had a plant, Metamora plant, mobile home plant, and they voted the Teamsters in, and the, they voted the Teamsters in on a Friday, and that Monday they closed the doors. But they gave the management, of which my husband was management, a choice of going to Waycross, Georgia, or Wills Point, Texas. I did not want to go to Georgia. And I'd been through Texas, but not really, didn't really know what it was like. So he took the Wills Point, Texas job. And at my farewell party, Tony Russo put his arm around me, and I've got a picture of it somewhere. He said, Terry, you need to just take a six-month leave of absence because you're not going to like Texas, and you're going to wish you were right back here. He said, other than the climate and the people, it's okay. And I've never forgot those words, and for the longest time when I was here, I was homesick every single day, just devastated, just homesick. Wanted to go home so bad. Then the longer I stayed and the country started changing, I'm right where I need to be. I am so glad to be in Texas. So glad. But I remember Tony telling me that. And that was the closest I've ever been. I don't know if the Russos and them had anything to do with it, but I know a lot of them mob guys had other cheese companies. And we used to tie grapes for Taylor Wine when we'd get off work at the cheese plant. Because wineries are on... Seneca Lake on both sides of it and we wouldn't only work all day at the cheese plant we would go tie grapes 
and get paid cash for it. So anyway, when my husband got transferred to Texas, I did not want to come, period. I didn't want to come. I had horses. He had coon hounds. He was a big coon hunter. And he finally called me and he gave me an ultimatum because the house was for sale. And he said, you either get your ass down here or file for divorce. So I got my dad. We brought just two coon hounds with us and my horses. And I moved to Texas. Been here ever since. That was in 77. And we didn't stay together two years. We broke up. And he, he's got houses all over the place. He still comes down here and sees his daughter. But I can remember my dad being in front of me. And he had some hard cider. Well, I don't know if any of you know, but when I first moved to Texas, it was dry. You had to drive 40 miles to buy a beer. It was the middle of the Bible Belt. You could not buy any alcohol anywhere. Well, the minute... My dad and me hit Texas at this woman's house that my husband had rented. The first thing he said was, where can I get some beer in this state? We had to drive 32 mi miles to get some beer. And he hung around for a while. And the, the way they talk, they call ponds, tanks. Look at that tank outside. I'd be looking for a butane tank or something. And it was a water. They call water tanks. They didn't like Yankees at all, period. Hated them. I was a Buffalo Bill fan. There's only one thing they hated worse than Yankees, and that was the Buffalo Bill person, because they're all cowboy fan here, and on top of everything else, the Bills lost four Super Bowls, and I quit watching football after that. That broke my heart, and I'm trying to be a cheerleader for them, and they can't even win a Super Bowl. It was devastating. So anyway, I acclimated, and I, I love it where I am, and I got married four more times since I've been here. So I just wanted to kind of come on here, and I've got my hummingbird feeders up. And I wanted to see if Hyena would do a blessing, but she obviously don't feel like blessing anybody. Hyena, have you changed your mind yet? And what are you eating? You got a lizard? Come here. I'm going to give you one more chance to bless these people. Hyena, come on. Amen too hot people she's not going to do it or she doesn't feel that anybody deserves it one or the other and i don't know where you're going to do a blessing huh hi he nah you want to do a blessing no blessings people sorry she's not a phony she's like me she says what she feels i am gonna take this little camera off of here i just want to tell everybody that lauren is making a comeback in the bottom feeder pit the one she came out of, she's back. She's rallying all the cop calling, CPS calling, job calling women that she had before. So, it should be fun. I am going to show you my hummingbird feeders. If I can see them. I can see what I'm doing. There's my hummingbird feeders. And I've got some more flowers, too. Oh, and I've got my snap. If you listen to anything that Lord has been saying since she was exposed, they call me meth ma. They don't really know anything. If I tell them, if I tell them I gave a realtor a blowjob and found out all the, I gave, I didn't even say blowjob. I said I gave my Monica Lewinsky and found out all their addresses, and they believe that. So anything you tell these dumb women, they'll believe. So be careful what you say. I don't know if you can really see these, how beautiful they are. These are my blood diamond things. But they're not showing up good. There's Reese. Reese, you want to say hi to Minnie? Come on, Reese. These dogs are just too hot today. They're not liking it out here. It's too hot, ain't it, babies? hot. There, maybe they'll show better there. <laughs> Hi, Hina. Picasso. Reese. They're too hot to even act bad. Their tongues are hanging out, and I am going to get them back in the air condition. 
But first, I have to pay a tribute to Durkee, who these bottom feeders know nothing about. They don't know who Durkee is. They're idiots. Okay, I'm going to shake my pills. Durkee and the PK and Mafia. This is for you. And I put my snap in my drink. And if anybody needs any addresses on anybody, I give Monica Lewinsky's to realtors. And I find out people's addresses. And I also have a judge on speed dial and several cops. So this is not much of a live, and I didn't really feel like doing one because I still got to go places when I get off of here. I just wanted to rush one in so I could do my Tuesday with Terry. But watch out for the bottom faders, guys. You'll know them because you'll have never seen them before, and they'll come in there sad fishing or talking about me, one or the other, but you already know everything about me. They don't have a thing on me, and it's killing them. It's absolutely killing them. So, Rivaderci and ciao. And my devoted followers, you know who you are. Keep me posted, because I really don't want to watch any of those women. It's easier if you just do it. send me the important stuff. Bye.